started and welcome everyone. So what have you done over the past little bit, which yes, includes the wonderful holiday. Um, what are you planning on and doing over the next uh, week or so? And if you need any resources and if there's any roadblocks, anything that's in your way. And um, Anshul, go ahead and, and start us off. Yeah, sure. So uh, nothing for the past couple of weeks. I was on vacation. Yeah, enjoy it. My parents are here from India, so it's going well. Yeah. Uh, now plan is, um, as discussed earlier, I will get back to my uh, development for end-to-end -end, uh, workflow test. I left it somewhere in the middle uh, where I was testing Thomas's uh, code. So yeah, uh, uh, Suoto and me were uh, both approaching the same problem from parallel uh, path. So we'll continue on that. Also, uh, I will write down breakdown of my task for debris mitigation. There are some action items on me. So I want to take that also. So we'll update Trello board regarding those tasks. So yeah, that's the plan. And no blockers, it looks at all looks good. All right, thank you so much. That's a, that's a ton. Uh, and I think I owe you I owe you some documents for debris mitigation um, as well, and I'll uh, yeah. do my best to get those done today. Um, and so you, yes, and few sample project proposals. Yeah, got them gathered. Cool. Thank you so much. The um, let's see who else is here. Oh, Paul, why, why don't you take the floor next? Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Um, not a whole lot to report. We've made some bunch of progress on getting the. Uh, the new remote lab online at Remote Lab South. Uh, so most of that is working now, and we can probably check that off on, on Trello as a completed item. Uh, won't do much good <laughs> for a while until we have a chance to, to build out the lab and put some test equipment in place. But we do have a remote computer, so uh, I'll set it up so that people can use it for uh, VMs if they want to do some high uh, high power number crunching or something like that in the meantime. So that's about all I have. Okay. Yeah, we did. Um, we did do a lot of work on trying to figure out how to best use the 9371 um, dev board that's on the ZC 706. Uh, so I, I'll talk a little bit about that, uh, because that's the sort of the retrospective of the past couple of weeks. Um, so what I've tried to do is get to the point where we are able to just drop in VHDL or, or Verilog. So any sort of HDL uh, that people want to do that they they should be able to just drop it in. And so I'm used to it being a little bit more straightforward than it is now. So the past couple of weeks, I've been um, exploring all of the different paths that Analog Devices has for the 9371. And that includes like things like the uh, the TES, mm -hmm. which is the transceiver in um, experimental or evaluation software, uh, and this generates it looks promising because it generates a lot of um, uh, C files for you to use, um, and and that you're supposed to be able to go to uh, the SDK in Vivado and 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 move forward. Well, this turned out to probably not be the best path forward. Um, it looks like it's great and it allows you to evaluate your waveforms, but IIO, um, API and the IIO path seems mm -hmm. to be the best. And the reason why I didn't do that starting out first is because two weeks ago, I simply couldn't get the um, live IIO to, to compile and to work on uh, ChocoCat, which now looking back, probably should have pushed a little harder on that. So what we've, we've done, me and Paul and a few other people have have gotten a whole lot better about this, uh, learned a whole lot more, and uh, hopefully will be of much greater use to people that are working on HDL solutions. So the question that Swato had was about how to use DMA. And I think we're not yet to the point where we can answer how to really nail it, but it seems that the IIO approach using um, the API for IIO uh, leverages all of that pretty well. So we're, we've, started moving a whole lot faster on on getting um, some real competence with using um, the the ADRV 9371 in the lab 
and to help drop in the HDL much more easily. So I think our assumption was that you all would be doing a lot of this work, that you would just somehow know how to use the equipment and that it does not appear to be the best path forward. I think that we need to provide a lot more service and support and be a lot more competent at, at how it works. So that's what we spent the uh, break doing and we're con going to continue to, to um, to move forward to get to the point where it's much easier to drop in. So I think there's a there's also a variety of different approaches. For example, the um, Paul probably could speak a lot more about the NFS uh, being added to an SD card. So the SD card image uh, that that they assume that you will be using for for this sort of work, it just sort of assumes that you're physically there and you have access to the SD card. What we'd like to do is get to the point where it's remotely accessible and the file system, which needs to be much larger than I think we're able to get with JTAG, that you can have a, a network file system um, and, and do all this work much more easily. And so that turned out to be a lot harder than we thought. Um, we think we may have all the artifacts built, uh, Paul can probably speak to this, and that we can simply use Petal Linux to just build an SD card. Uh, but then also um, we have some advice about uh, NBD, which is another method of, of booting that, that may work. Okay, so, so that's it for my retrospective. Um, for, for me over the next week is just simply make this easy for everyone to use and to really dig in a lot harder on, on that. So that's what I'm gonna be using. There's a variety of blockers um, and there's, uh, the, we, are, we have all the resources that we need. We have the equipment that we need and we think we have access to everything at analog devices and at Xilinx that we need in order to solve the problems. I think it's just a question of us getting uh, competent more quickly in order to help everyone here. So I'm gonna put it back to Paul to correct anything or expand on anything that I've said. No, I believe you got everything right. I'm sorry, I forgot to, to bring that up myself. The NBD and NFS are, as far as I can tell, interchangeable for our purposes. They both have the same characteristics. You have to set up a server on your uh, your VM on the on the Linux machine and you have to enable the kernel that you're booting to use it. Uh, that's where we've been hung up on using NFS-based uh, root file systems to, up to now. And it's only because I don't know much about building Linux kernels that, that we are hung up. I, I think that building the kernel the way ADI does in the Kuiper build and then adding NFS to it is the path to be on. And we've gotten sidetracked on trying to build much larger things that ADI provided, like the entire Kuiper build, uh, which turns out to be kind of a buggy build and uh, has been time consuming and trying to get past all the bugs because each iteration takes a while to run, even on a powerful machine. So I think anybody who actually knows what they're doing with this could play, play through this faster than we're doing. But uh, with a chance of, of getting to a, a solution fairly soon, we'd be able to provide a, a kernel that's bootable and the problem should be behind us for a while. All right, that, that sums it up for now for us. Um, so Andre Sawato, uh, you have the floor. Um, hi, hi. Um, so I haven't done any real dev work in a while. I, I'm working on the, like the, the presentation of uh, the, DVB as to encoder deep dive stuff on Ham Expo. And that's pretty much it. I basically getting back to work um, yeah, today, actually. So not big news. Oh, no, that's huge news. Thank you so much for doing uh, such a, a wonderful presentation. So that's, I think that's very big. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, sure. No problem. No problem. Yeah, do you need anything or is anything uh, blocking you? Um, I, no, not really. I, I'm like, there is, uh, I'm trying to, I was trying to find out a way to avoid like, um, like boring slides, <laughs> but every, <laughs> every alternative has like a huge learning curve. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to stick to old fashioned stuff. That's totally fine. Whatever yeah. works. Yeah, I, I, we all feel your pain um, and we look forward to your presentation. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Very good.
All right, Stefano, you, uh, it looks like you're next on the list, at least to me. Um, so you have the floor. Let us know what, you're, what you've been doing and uh, what you uh, want to do next and uh, any blockers or any resources that you need. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so really, I don't know because uh, the, um, I, I started watching uh, um, the last uh, YouTube video in which there was uh, stated that the NFS uh, approach was a little bit uh, tricky to, to implement. And, and then uh, I, I tried to uh, engage discussion with the uh, with team members, but I, I had no luck in this. So um, I tried myself to find an alternative. Uh, and I found uh, experimented this on, onto my PC, and it seems to, to work fine. Um, so nobody asked me to go this way. I decided <laughs> in, my, in my head, this is also very useful for classroom. I have two children and uh, <laughs> uh, the, maybe having uh, the network file system not complicated as NFS, but uh, uh, instead of as a raw device, so much lower level is uh, useful uh, knowledge uh, uh, also in other, another topic. So if there is a specific, uh, if there are no problem on to NFS. It's uh, it's already there, and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I in, I will be happy then to uh, to understand if there is some other stuff uh, to uh, to try. Uh, otherwise, I can go on to on to NBD. It's just for my personal knowledge, first of all. So, uh, out of curiosity, uh, I tried this this way. That's all from, yeah, <laughs> as a starting point. So I didn't know what to do. I decided to do one thing, but if you guys have a, a precious indication, maybe I can follow it. Cool, okay. Yeah, I think probably Paul's the, the best one to comment on on uh, on MBD rather than me, but I genuinely appreciate your contribution and, and helping out your suggestions um, and, and so, yeah, like, like, um, well, I'll just, I'll defer to Paul to make any comments about MBD versus NFS or the the progress forward. I, I think that having both both options is uh, fantastic, and and really appreciate the work. Yeah, as I said, I believe that NFS and MBD are going to be pretty much interchangeable for our purposes, um, unless MBD is always built into the kernel, and I don't think that's the case. I did a little fifteen second research into this and found that it's also a installable module. So it's the same as NFS uh, in terms of our complexity, even though the, the, the implementation complexity, that which we hopefully don't have to worry about, is, is lower. So hold, hold that thought until we get to the point of trying to implement it. Uh, and it, if it turns out to be easier, we'll, by all means, we'll adopt it and very much appreciate your work in uh, getting ahead on that. Yeah, ditto to that. Thank you. All right, and then Everest, you have the floor. Thanks for um, Oh, it's working. Yeah, it's better. It's working, yes, okay, you have the yeah. floor. Okay, sorry, uh, the input audio was done to, uh, it's an input from the Pluto, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Very good. All right, please proceed. Okay, uh, so thank you uh, for, well, let me join uh, the team. Uh, just a um, uh, quick update. I tried to um, uh, integrate the uh, DBVS2 uh, uh, modulator inside the Pluto. It seems that uh, the resources are OK, which means that uh, there is enough DSP for that. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I have not completely uh, updated my uh, uh, my um, my knowledge of all the the projects right now, so I, I just uh, get in with this uh, door, but uh, I try to uh, to uh, understand better all the uh, all the participants. Uh, so right now I begin to uh, work on the design, and uh, I go to Vivado. 2021, and now it seems to uh, that the RTL uh, DVBES2 encoder is in the design. I need to uh, connect all that. 
and uh, maybe have to uh, understand some uh, something about clock, etc. But uh, it's a detail. Um, so I have uh, some uh, experiments with the Pluto uh, and the DVD. Uh, right now, the modulation is done uh, with the arm of the zinc. Uh, it's done uh, with the work from uh, Brian G4EGW, which has worked on a neon optimized um, modulator, DVBS2 modulator. And as I remember, I, own, uh, I can already uh, modulate that about uh, 15 mega symbol, I think, just with the arm. And uh, <clears throat> I, I'm very curious to, uh, uh, to see how we can uh, go with the FPGA implementation. Uh, I have a lot of uh, glue uh, around the DVB, which means uh, I have the Max, I have uh, a lot of things because I, I did the firmware for that and uh, very used for Q100. Uh, so maybe if uh, my experience could help, uh, that's, that would be a pleasure. Then back to you, Michelle. Oh, thank you. No, welcome. And we definitely appreciate your experience and, uh, and, and all the wonderful things that you're sharing. No, thank you. Uh, look forward to helping you achieve all of the goals. Um, is there anything at the moment that's blocking you or the, the resources that you need uh, other than information and, and cooperation? Well, the main, the main issue right now is to understand uh, really the, uh, the RTL DVBS2 encoder, uh, which means that I understand uh, quickly that we input some BB frame, uh, but there is some uh, uh, detail uh, which block me, which mean uh, uh, how well how it is working well, and it's not very easy to have uh, an example of uh, complete. Uh, I, I don't know if it exists right now. Uh, a complete design with uh, DAC on a on the platform. I say that there is some uh, example on the uh, which integrates uh, the uh, the component, but uh, is I, I don't know if there is a complete uh, working uh, platform right now. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Anybody want to give some comments or or pointers? Yeah, what we're working towards is an end-to-end -end demo, so we're trying very hard to get a complete design on our platform. Um, and it feels like we're close, but there's all sorts of stuff that we still need to do. So I'm going to be quiet and let other people answer. Um, there is, but not with um, like um, ADC or you know, yeah, basically analog side stuff. Like I did put together some stuff that basically connects, um, what was it? Uh, I think the, the zinc, I, I don't remember exactly what the, the components were, but there was a way I was able to stream data in and then stream data out as well. Uh, but it, it just, I just don't, didn't use any um, like real analog or AD stuff. It's just all all all, all digital, really. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so not that there is, as I understand, there is not a complete uh, yeah. system uh, working with the um, uh, real uh, digital analog converter. Um, and uh, but I, I think uh, I I could be close uh, because. Well, I, I play with the FPGA design. I, I'm not uh, really an FPGA guy, so I'm considering as a new buy. Um, I try to uh, to put some blocks and uh, try to understand all the all the connection. I, I did that uh, with several uh, uh, special design for the, the FPGA, but I, mm -hmm. I, I I'm not uh, well. I am still learning, so you, you know. So uh, I, I could have uh, maybe some new buy question. Uh, so sorry about that. 
Um, uh, but, it's fine. Uh, I, 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 I never, uh, I don't think I played with uh, analog device stuff. So it's kind of weird. Like the five, I, I would expect just Axie interfaces, but never mind. There, there is five for read and able, which, which you asked rightly in the, in the chat. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I have asked you. Um, yeah. Well, I put some uh, some question on the uh, on the Slack, mm. and uh, uh, thank you uh, for helping me uh, about that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm still learning. I will um, definitely try to help as I can. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's true for all of us. Uh, so yeah. we're we're all very motivated to make this. Uh, work and and work very well, um, you know. But we each have a, a lot of of learning to do. So um, and helping each other and sharing and being of mutual aid is is the only real way that we'll be able to accomplish this. So, mm -hmm. all right, Anshul. Yeah, see ya. Anshul has to go. And um, let's see. I think has everyone had a chance to speak. I think that's the case. Is there any final um, comments, questions, or resources, or, or anything like that, that, uh, that anyone would like to bring? Uh, sorry, Michelle, uh, I didn't understand um, fully uh, the, um, uh, what's the status so with the, the missing layer you posted some days ago um, of the uh, SPI and the timer files? Not oh, really yeah, yes, yeah, so I can answer that. Yeah, that was sorry. a very strange experience. So the, the um, that was probably what what convinced us uh, that maybe the the using the transceiver evaluation software. This is software that's from um, analog devices. So they want you to use a TES, which is an application, and it uh, you you go in. It has a graphical user interface, and you configure the the AD ninety three seventy one, however you like. So you set up the timers, and you set up. Um, the the receiver, uh, you set up the transmitter. Uh, there's some other things you can you can do. Um, a bandwidth and frequency, I think, are in there too. Uh, and then you export these the these sets of files. You take that to the SDK in Vivado. Uh, what they intend for you to use is 2019.1, and and then you're supposed to build your application that also addresses the 9371 on the ZC1 we're using the ZC706. Um, and so when you go to build it, there's all these missing files. There's missing header files. There's four of them. And you go to the forum and th they just say, oh, just implement it yourself. And so I I've never really had this experience before where an IDE and a, a, a tool, tool chain provided by a company just, you had to then implement SPY, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from yeah. scratch. Like, a, so we tried. Um, we got kind of a little way through it and we dug in further and further and I got more and more uncomfortable that this was a way for people to to make progress um, and so we backed up out of that uh, after spending about uh, it was like a good four or five days on that so we backed up from that and then said oh IIO the industrial input output drivers at the device tree um, the API to talk to the 9371 that that's the better way forward and you don't need any of those files. Um, so I'll come back around and write this down and as a summary for the for Slack, um, because and we were not the only people to go down this road either. There, the the forums and and the internet is littered with people trying to figure out what the hell to do when they come up with no implementation and no files and no headers for this for this way forward. But there's also another way forward that we experimented with, which was the no OS, so no operating system at all method of dealing with the 9371. And as somebody that, that grew up and mostly programmed in assembly, I thought this has to be better. Well, it wasn't either. So using the no OS uh, approach for the 9371 means that you're implementing absolutely everything from scratch. And I think that that's probably too much um, to implement from scratch. It's also relatively new rollout from them. So they they put out all the new, the no OS stuff. Uh, and we miss out on a lot of the functions that you can get from using IIO um, and having that as your device tree. That's what we've learned over the past couple of weeks. And that's why I was asking about the missing uh, files, just to see if anybody else had already done this. If we already had a set of the headers and implementations in the project, and the answer looks to be no. 
um, and that we should not be uh, following that that way forward. So that's that's a that's the background on on that particular uh, investigation. So IIO appears to be the right way. Just uh, just a quick uh, <clears throat> uh, remark on that. Uh, the Pluto is uh, working on the IIO. Uh, it's uh, quite easy to well. It's um, yeah, quite easy to uh, uh, integrate it to Linux, and I think that the new no OS is uh, ready uh, on your own, and uh, so it's it's maybe the best if you want a complete product, a very dedicated product. Uh, uh, but as soon as you want to uh, to have some process in Linux uh try try io uh, at the same time i'm that there is some uh, very there is some limitation with io because it's very general and uh, i'm working right now on uh, bypassing io in in certain way uh to uh, discuss <coughs> uh with the with the card uh based on mqtt uh, which could be easier to uh, communicate with extra uh, process, but on uh, general way, uh, the IO is uh, very well supported with uh, analog device, and this is maybe uh, the easiest way, easiest way to uh, to do it. Thank you yeah, so very much. That's very helpful. Oh, go ahead. No, sorry, Michelle. Uh, uh, my connection was dropped, and then I uh, connected the, through the phone. So, um, so but thanks for. Uh, I think I got most of the point you you stated. So, uh, and normally at work, I um, I do uh, firmware, uh, mostly software for um, FPGA or bare metal um, application. Uh, so, uh, as far as I know of the status of the project. Uh, yeah, it's not easier, but it's not uh, impossible. Um, uh, by adding, for example, light to white AP, uh, one should have the, uh, the Ethernet. And then, uh, so if the bare metal, the no OS uh, files are working as and tested uh, as uh, one expect from uh, analog device, uh, and then we can uh, build on to, uh, on to, um, uh, and to uh, something uh, that we know uh, that is known to, to work without uh, having to go around and uh, inventing a uh, middle layer uh, not uh, available from the from the analog device. So um, from my side, even the um, bare metal approach is not uh, uh, is not too uh, too completely uh, disregarded. Uh, even because once one has the Ethernet connection on, on uh, set up, and then one can just have a method to read and write memory. Normally, uh, most devices into FPGAs are memory mapped. So in my experience, it, uh, um, one can create a general method without uh, having to deal with uh, every kind of message separately. And so the knowledge of the message is left to the to the host connecting to the to the board. And in this way, then we can uh, somewhat abstract and uh, can have just like a script that read and write in memory. Because normally with the software we don't uh, we don't decode data. We are on the control plane, not onto the data plane. So uh, so one can even think to this uh, to this approach, but. Uh, yeah, would would be more software than uh, than than uh, so without using Linux and so NBD uh, even NFS maybe uh, uh, can be file system are really uh, uh, not so huge so maybe can be loaded in RAM uh, if requested so also the problem is uh, completely skipped and other problem we are we are working on. Oh, thank you. That's super helpful. I think we'll we'll take all of this advice and uh, and move forward as best we can. I see the screen. That looks familiar. All right, Evarist, you have the floor. Yeah. So it's just uh, 
it's just uh, where I go on mm -hmm. the, the Pluto. So it's the, the design of the Pluto here. You can, you can see that there is the DVB encoder wrapper uh, inside. And uh, there is some uh, few uh, connection to uh, left. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> oh, very good. That's lovely. That looks familiar. This is, this is more like it. <laughs> so hope that uh, there is uh, a result in a uh, few times. Yeah, okay. very good. Okay, yeah. no, this is a it. It may it cheers my heart. So I <laughs> very good. Outstanding. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll edit and post the the video so that folks that weren't able to be here can can catch up. It's wonderful to be back, and it looks like we have plenty to do. Um, Everyone, please uh, ask questions and post your work on Slack, and we will move forward over January to, to getting a good end-to-end -end demo. Uh, sorry, uh, when you suspect the demo? Which day? Uh, what we're trying to do is get it finished by Hamcation, which is mid-February or early February. So we'll be, um, what we would like to, to talk about and show the demonstration results uh, between the 9th and the 14th of February. Uh, you know, and that's that's the goal, and it's a it's a ambitious one uh, because a lot of the setup and and grappling with things like um, DMA access uh, and understanding how how this uh, system on chip works have taken longer than than we anticipated, um, but we do have a lot of the components uh, working. So it's a question of correctly integrating and learning how to use the tool learning how to use the tools and the resources. Uh, so so we're, we're looking to work hard through the rest of January to get an uh, end to end demo. Thank you, thank you, Michelle. Oh, sure, I, thank I think you. In, in this purpose, uh, even the emulator can help because if we are studying then the DMA, as far as I know, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, emulated uh, almost accurately uh, because the software is uh, uh, work as, as is. Uh, obviously, there can be a bug in, into, into the port, signing porting. Uh, also, to work, I uh, I add devices to QM, so uh, I'm I'm more confident in uh, in working with the with this emulator. I think it's very very helpful. But obviously, if the problem is at the FPGA level, <laughs> QM can help uh, in this. Right. Yeah. No. Thank you. All right, we will close the meeting and see you on Slack and uh, we'll be back next week. Um, sure. So that's, yeah, that's our, that's our next standup. Um, the tradition for, for agile management is not, is to have this sort of meeting every day, uh, but for, for this sort of open source work every week is uh, what we've been doing. Uh, so we touch base every week to talk about what we've done over the past week, what we'll do, be doing over the next week and whether what we need and uh, if there's anything that's blocking the way. Um, but most of the work I think is probably going to be over the next week, especially is gonna be reported on Slack. And I, for one, will have lots of um, probably pretty basic questions about uh, integrating and, and working with this particular uh, system and board. Um, so lots of things have happened over the past couple of weeks. Uh, big welcome to everyone. We definitely appreciate your expertise and help. Uh, I think that we'll be able to achieve a lot of goals over the next couple of weeks. And let's see what we can do. Thank you. You bet. All right. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, all.